All right, so thanks for joining us um, for our Meerkat, and I'm also taping this live for YouTube. So you'll see this up on YouTube. I've got a um, new two pound roaster, which just came in here today. Uh, it's been on order for a little bit, but uh, I've got it here, and I thought I'd unbox it for you live on Meerkat, which would be kind of exciting. You can see uh, everything that's involved with this roaster. All right, so um, here we go. So I already untaped it, so that's all good. And we're going to see what's inside. All right, first up, user's manual. Uh, I already read through it on PDF form, but it's nice to get a paper copy. It says this manual must be retained for future reference. And it does explain how to service and to clean the the chaff collection, how to control the roaster, how to load it, uh, how to install the uh, fuel supply, and uh, etc. All right, so I'll try not to violate too many of those rules as we're digging into it. Uh, anyway, so here's the box, and it's got a nice big piece of foam here on the top, molded. Nice dense stuff. This was 95 pounds shipped, which is pretty exciting. All right, so there you go. I'm gonna take that off to the side and see what we've got in here. All right, so they they ship it kind of assembled, and they stash the box in between. So it looks like I'm just gonna be expected to lift it right out. Does it say I need two people to do this? We'll see. This may be exciting internet. Mm, da -da 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 -da. Comply to low local codes. Do not remove housing cover. Introduction. You will have a pretty awesome roaster. Location, water resistant. Three inches from combustibles. Level, altitude. Never exceed five PSI. Electric power. Only draws three amps. Venting. Must be vented to the outside. Yeah, we're gonna work on that. All right. I'm going to uh, turn it on its side. I think that's the way to do this with one person. So, that said top. Yeah, I don't see how else to do this. It doesn't really. It's not good to lift it by that, I don't think. Okay, here we go. Again, it's pretty heavy. I don't want to scratch. Okay. Here we go. Now. Oh. You can't see it yet. All right, there we go. So the bottom of the box, of course, nice piece of foam. I can put the old foam in there. And then I'm going to unveil it for you here, live on Meerkat. Oh, sorry for hitting the camera there, Meerkatters. Let's stop that. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, now yeah, we'll just stick this over here. Out of the way. All right, so here she is. So this is gonna have all of the LP gas and advanced CDs and the roasting chamber. That's in there and here's, here's the roaster. So you can see it's beautiful. Red. Let's see, this is quite, quite the different machine than what we had before. All right. So what I didn't do is I actually didn't make space over here in my workspace. So let's do that. Because I was roasting over here with our previous sample roaster. All right, so let's just 
Stick our manual out of the way. Get our scale out of the way. This roaster. Get that guy out of the way for now. Okay. Always lift with your knees. So, there you go. She's big and she's beautiful. Bring the camera over a little closer for you, Meerkat folks, so you can see what we're dealing with here. So that's pretty exciting, huh? Look at that awesome thing. So. Uh, the roasting chamber goes here and it, it can do 2.2 pound bat. It'll be a final weight, 2.4 pound green and then that's about two pounds roasted. Uh, the controls are here um, to start. The roast is here. Next up, you'll be able to set the presets right underneath there. And then down here, first you turn on the gas, then you turn on uh, the power, which turns on the blower. So that's that, but we'll read all the instructions here. And uh, it's not going to vent properly, of course, because I need to run my vent. But uh, that's okay, I think. I watched some folks online who actually did it that way. So despite all the recommendations, I think we can probably make it work. All right, so machine. I hadn't quite worked out how I was going to orient it. How's that look? That looks pretty good. So then this is what allows you to access the chamber to re retrieve it and then you allow it to close again. See, I've got the fan set up. I'm gonna use that for my ventilation temporarily, very temporarily until I can run the attic vent. So, I know reading manuals on uh, television, like I said, I already did it. So I know I've got my propane so hopefully that will work. All electrical work goes by contractor. Venting must be placed it, must use a hood or vented into a steel pipe or through a vent. So I've set up my own vent temporarily, which is probably not enough. Should use a powered vent. I'm gonna make sure you want to have don't have back venting. Fine. Use green. Uh, wash your dry process coffee is fine. Do not use power button to stop a roast. Fine. Always use the measuring can. 2.4. Do not overfill, underfill. Inconsistent results, etc. Do not leave the roaster to run unintended. All right. Component descriptions. So let's see. We've got the box. Let's see what's in the box. All right, so here's the box, and uh, we're gonna check it out. Ready? So, uh, let's open this up. Let's see what's in here. All right, we have here, apart from peanuts, we have the roasting chamber. Now, if you remember our previous roaster, um, the smaller roaster, which I've moved out of the way temporarily, that roaster had a chamber that could hold 16 ounces. This chamber holds um, 24, 40 ounces. So 40 ounces, and it operates on a different principle. Here's my CD with software, which I'll load up later, because this is computer controlled. You can see it's a glass, it's heavy, and then it has a um, porous metal bottom because it's going to go here. And what happens is this is going to blow hot air through and it actually creates what's called a fluid bed. So the coffee is actually floating on hot air as it's roasting. So that's pretty exciting. I think we got all, everything from that section. Let's see what's over here. Uh, wire brush. Helpful for getting the chaff. Let's see what else. There, 
For the two pound, they give you a highly precise measuring device, <laughs> uh, which I may just weigh coffee, but uh, must use cans of green beans, 2.8 pounds. So there you go. So that means two of these cans, each one must be 1.4 pounds. Okay, then we have, we have our natural gas line, which is long enough to reach to my propane tank. So that'll be just fine. Maybe we will get up and running tonight yet. All right, then we're gonna have the chaff collection. So if you've watched uh, any of my previous roasting videos, power cord right here, okay, the power cord. If you've watched the previous roasting videos, you know that chaff collection is a little bit of a mess. Um, so I'm hoping with, with this large uh, chaff collection device, uh, my cleanup is gonna be significantly faster. So there's a chaff screen, and I don't think I assembled it quite right yet, but we'll just get it out of the way for a moment. Let's see, I got power cord, I've got gas line, I've got chaff collection, I've got the, the roasting chamber here, so I think we're doing pretty good with this box. Doesn't feel like there's anything else in there. All right, so let's assemble. And chaff collector works like so. So this is the bottom, the handle like this. Okay, then you put the chaff wall on. Then you add the, the top filter screen. Okay, then lift the handle set it on top of the roasting chamber and then drop. Okay, and this top plate just sits on top like so. So what you've got here is the fine mesh up at the top. Um, and then, of course, there was no mesh at the bottom. So this, the hot air is gonna blow all the chaff into that chamber here and those fins are gonna catch the chaff, chaff so that they don't sit in the beans and burn. All right, so I think Let's, uh, well, it wants me to put coffee in, but um, excuse me, I haven't actually connected up my gas line or my power. So, so why don't we do that first? So, power, I'm going to plug that guy in. And again, that's easy enough. We know how to do a power plug. <clears throat> this is not an electric, this does not use electric heat. This uses propane heat. So that means it's not high current. Uh, it also means I can keep track of uh, my costs because a house uses natural gas and I want to keep uh, a separate tab on my propane usage. Okay, so we're going to connect that to the tank. Which technically, I don't believe, usually run inside. Right. So they didn't give me any uh, tool instructions, so I'll we'll get the right tools here. All right. Tighten this guy down. Okay. So I've got my gas line connected. Uh, I've got power on. I suppose we could te test that. Let's see. Okay. It's saying no gas, which is good. All right, so we're ready to do the next step, which is uh, lower this, remove the roast chamber. 
So this stays where it is. Lift the stanchion. Remove the chaff collection. Okay. Remove the roast chamber. Now we're going to load the roast chamber. And I think we'll load it with, we're going to do espresso monkey. Okay. Because I know, I think I have enough espresso monkey for a full batch. So we're going to, but we're actually going to weigh it as we go too, because I'm curious. Two level cans for two pound roaster. Okay. So here we go. This likes a nice dark roast. So here, we'll just do it this way. I'm gonna have to figure out the logistics of using this. Alright. One level can is one pound, 5.8 ounces. What did it say? Yeah. And another can is, survey says, this is not really by weight, it's really more by volume. Two pounds, 12 ounces. Now the can says, must use two cans of green beans, 2.8. So 0.8 of 16 is 12, right? Close enough. All right, so that's accurate. So again, this is Espresso Monkey. Um, I haven't roasted this in a long time. It's good. So we're gonna use that for trial run here. Drop that in place. Okay, just following the instructions. First time out, why not? Assemble the chaff connector. Make sure that the wall's in the groove. The screen above is in the groove. Make sure the rubber seal is sealed up with the top of the cham roasting chamber. Which it is. Make sure that's down. All right, there we go. And next up, roaster controls. Initiate the roast with three simple steps. First, switch the power and the gas. Select the desired roast level for the coffee being roasted. Push and release the start and roast button. So roast level most drips decaf espresso, espresso robust drips. So we're gonna use their roasting profile tonight. First time out, just be safe, right? Um, and uh, we're gonna go from there. And I like, like we've done before, uh, we can weigh the coffee afterwards and we'll see how that goes. But first time out, I've watched all the videos, I've researched this model. Um, so I think we can do this. So let's go back and it says push up and down and then flip it on. Let's turn on the gas like so. Turn off my scale. We're going to pick roast level six. So and roast level six and ready, let's go. Pushing start. There we go. on. I'll bring you up close here, Meerkat. So you can watch it go. Yes, it did come with Teflon tape. So it's creating a fluid bed here. See, they're agitating even more significantly now, and you'll hear the you'll hear the gas kick in and out. 
Uh, it's very light, cool to the touch here because there's a large chamber. Gas kicked in again, so it's monitoring the exhaust temperature coming out of the top, and it uses the exhaust temperature to control the uh, the heat because we're we're trying to hit a certain profile with the beam. As with uh, the other roaster, uh, I'm using a particular profile, but if I'm not, if I want to end the roast a little bit earlier than the profile, uh, that's perfectly doable. You just shut off the gas. So I'm going to be prepared to do that uh, as I'm listening. So again, this is roasting. I'm starting with uh, close to three pounds, and I'm roasting it all um, here. This will, this will be final weight, probably right around two pounds. And uh, with my current 12 ounce batches, that's gonna be great. I actually have a customer who'd like some espresso roast, so we're gonna send him a sample from this batch as well. I'll probably end up drinking uh, the rest of it at church and elsewhere. Since I don't have the uh, proper ventilation uh, hooked up yet so that I can vent to the outside, I'm already seeing uh, some chaff collecting up here in the top. Again, this is not putting off any more heat than the previous roaster, so it's not really a danger, but, but it, is, uh, it is roasting a larger volume than I had before. But interestingly enough, the uh, manufacturer of this roaster, they give some specifications as to uh, the exhaust temperature that indicates the end of the roast, and it's pretty comparable uh, to what we had before with the, with the smaller roaster. Okay, I'm hearing first cracks. See if we can get in a little closer for you. And watch those. The color is changing pretty significantly. If you've watched before, you know this is going some, quite a bit faster than what we had with the smaller roaster. We still got some more, need some more first cracks here, so we're coming up on those. Color's changing pretty substantially. All right, we're getting some more first cracks. You can see the colors changing. It's becoming more uh, lighter brown, darker brown. Again, this is what's called a fluid bed. So the idea is to keep the beans agitated using hot air, and the hot air is also roasting uh, the coffee. And you can see as, as the beans have lost moisture, they become lighter. And now we're getting many first cracks. There's the gas kicking in. Again, I can manually end the roast uh, when I'm satisfied. 
It's a little different with a fluid bed roaster over a conventional uh, convection roaster. Many first cracks happening now. Uh, the reason is, is that uh, the, the movement of the oils and the, the acids within the coffee, between the cellular walls, uh, is different when it's heated with air convection. Okay, many first cracks happening. So this is legitimately the, the period of first crack, and certainly by the color, I would agree. Sorry, Meerkat. Change your angle a little bit. I can see a little bit better that way. Okay, we're still going through first cracks. And the color is right at the end of first of uh, city roast. Now we're getting closer to a second crack. Again, I'm roasting this for espresso. But uh, that color is looking really good, and it's an even roast, which is what we want to see. All right, we're in the stall between the first crack and the second crack. I'm going to let this go into a roll on the second crack. And once it hits the roll, I'm going to shut off the gas. It may shut off for me. We'll see how close, how precise their profiles are set up. Okay, I'm going to listen for a second crack. Okay, we're into the second cracks, and I'm going to shut off the gas. And of course, you leave the roaster on because uh, we want that air moving. Because now it's going to use the air to shut off the gas. Now it's going to use the air to cool down the beans. All right. So that is a that is a beautiful Vienna roast, Full City Plus to Vienna right where I want to be. You can start to see there's some oil coming out on the surface slightly, just a nice matte sheen, which is what we want to see. And this is going to roast all the way to the end of its cycle, and then we're going to learn how to clean it up, uh, which I didn't bring a vacuum in here, so maybe I'll do that while it's finishing up here. All right.
So again, I've shut off the gas. Uh, right now it's still just running at its cool down cycle. There's still pretty warm air coming out of the vent, so uh, it's going to take a few minutes to cool down. All right, so if you've been uh, watching, thanks for joining us on the YouTube video. And um, we've been roasting with the Sono Fresco two pound roaster. Uh, first time out, not properly ventilated yet. Uh, just outside, basically, I've got the garage doors open. And also, um, um, just roasting a sample batch using their roasting profiles. Uh, I think I'm pretty pleased with the results. And we're gonna see here, when it's done cooling down, we're gonna look at them, uh, measure them, and we're gonna see how they profile out, all right? All right, they're still cooling. So I'm gonna pull back the uh, Meerkat audience.